Obesity Explained, Episode 3, PARP, NAD+, and Metabolic Rate, featuring my rice tin. So this study is really interesting. It looks at identical twins, one of whom is significantly heavier, fatter than the other one. And so these are, you know, humans that have identical genetics. Presumably they have identical epigenetics. They were presumably raised in the same household, eating the same meals. And yet later in life, one of them has become significantly more obese than the other. And so this study looked at why that might be or what are some of the differences. And one of the major things that they found was increased uh, amount of something called PARP activity. What is PARP? PARP's an enzyme. We'll get more into it later, but you can see. So there's this line connects a pair of twins. So you can see this is the, the PARP activity of the lean twin on the left. And this is the PARP activity of the fatter twin on the right. And you can see that indeed the heavier twin has more PARP activity. Um, you, they also showed in this experiment that the heavier twins have less SIRT1 activity. SIRT1 is a deacetylase. It takes acetyl groups off of your mitochondrial enzymes and keeps them running. Acetyl groups, they come from your food, but they're kind of like rust. They just stick on your enzymes and slow them down. And so the, the heavier twins have less SIRT1 activity and, and less ability to remove acetyl groups. Um, they also have less of something called NAMPT, which is involved in NAD plus recycling. And all of these things are involved in NAD plus metabolism. This is a second study. Uh, just, just to really show the point, um, these are, this is no longer in identical twins. This is just a group of obese humans and a group of lean humans. And you can see, this is the difference. You can see the obese humans have much higher PARP activity, whether or not they're identical twins. And so PARP steals NAD+. PARP is an NAD+, thief. Uh, it's actually called an NAD ace. And what it does is it takes NAD+, and it splits it into um, this cyclic ADPR and nicotinamide. So, so the PARP is literally breaking down the NAD+. And PARP activity is actually activated by the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And in the first episode of this series, I provide evidence that the era hydrocarbon receptor is actually increased in human obesity. And that might be the reason why PARP is increased. Um, this is a Nature paper. It's a very good paper. And what it shows is that they used TCDD, which is an environmental persistent organic pollutant. You've probably consumed these kinds of organic pollutants they're in uh, beef to some extent. They're in drinking water. They're in a lot of things. You probably have some of them. Um, and what TCDD does, TCDD does, is it activates the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And when the aryl hydrocarbon receptor is activated, it increases an enzyme called TCDD inducible PARP. And that PARP that's activated by the era hydrocarbon receptor steals your NAD+. This is done in mice, but you can see that when uh, TCDD activates the era hydrocarbon receptor, uh, NAD+, levels drop by almost half in response to the activation of PARP. Now, this causes reductive stress. Uh, mostly, it lowers NAD+. Um, but it also increases the NADH to NAD plus ratio, which is not what you want. Um, like I say, CERT1 uh, also is an NAD ace and it requires NAD plus to do its job. So if PARP steals all the NAD plus, CERT1 can't do its job. Your mitochondrial enzymes become acetylated and cannot function and you have a low metabolic rate. Um, in this series, we like to follow the money and see what the pharmaceutical companies are doing. So there's a drug called Olaparib, which is made by AstraZeneca. That is a PARP inhibitor that has actually been on the market since around 2014, uh, and it treats cancer. And so this has not been tested in metabolic studies in humans. It's not approved for metabolic studies in humans, but they've done some really interesting tests on it in mice. And so Olaparib 
is the cop that stops the thief from stealing uh, your NAD plus, right? Um, so this was done in, this is done in mice. But you can see that, so they, they put these mice on a high fat diet that's designed to fatten them up. And then they gave them this, um, this PARP inhibitor. And you can see the mice weigh less. Um, they have less fat mass and they have a higher metabolic rate. Uh, that VO2 is oxygen consumption. That means how much oxygen are they consuming? And that if you're consuming more oxygen, you have a higher metabolic rate. And so you see the direct effect on inhibiting the NAD plus thief and increased metabolic rate. Also, interestingly, um, the leanest mice are the laziest mice. So the mice with high metabolic rate, right? They're burning through all their energy and they just don't feel the need to get up and move around there. Um, this is the same, interestingly, as in lean humans. This is a study uh, from July of this year. And they showed that in China, the leanest humans uh, move around to have significantly less activity um, than heavier humans and this makes sense when you think about it if you have a high metabolic rate you're just you're just burning through your calories you don't have a lot extra to move around um, and so this is uh, again from that same study with the mice and so they they took obese humans and they took a, a cell culture from their mus their muscles they took a biopsy and they cultured those muscle cells and then they gave uh, it a laparib. And you can see there at the bottom, the, the black bars are with olaparib. And so in uh, muscle tissue from obese humans, if you give them olaparib, NAD plus levels go up, right? Because the obese humans are making a lot of PARP and PARP is stealing the NAD plus. So if you block the PARP, NAD plus goes up. Uh, you also see OCR's oxygen consumption rate. So the muscles from obese humans, the metabolic rate goes up if you block part and if you get that NAD plus back um, oleic acid oxidation that means fat burning um, so when you block PARP uh, obese human muscle tissue burns more fat um, this is citrate synthase activity Citrate citrate synthase is the limiting enzyme that begins the Krebs cycle um, so it's a controlling factor in your metabolic rate. And if you block PARP, it goes up by like fourfold. That is a massive increase in citrate synthase. So, you know, what should you do? Uh, should you take Olaparib? Well, Olaparib has only been approved for cancer. In theory, your doctor could give you an off-label, um, but they probably won't uh, give you a prescription for that since it's only for cancer. And also there's no long-term studies about the safety of it. Um, However, one of the things that we have available to us that really does block PARP activity are dietary flavones. Um, and so dietary flavones are inhibitors of, and you can see it there, poly ADP ribose polymerase. That means PARP. <laughs> um, and so in this study, they, they just looked at the enzyme activity of PARP and they, you know, did it in uh, cell culture and they, they gave different amounts of of these different uh, flavones and uh, some of them are pretty good. You can see quercetin uh, is in onions and a lot of things and it, it inhibits the enzyme by 62%. Um, but this other one called myristin actually inhibits PARP activity by 93%. Um, so that is very good enzyme inhibition. Um, and additionally, my ristin actually, if, if it's in high enough concentration, also blocks the ARI hydrocarbon receptor itself. So this is a test of um, this EROD is a, is a gene who's incre which is increased by the ARI hydrocarbon receptor. So this is a, a, a sort of indirect test of ARI hydrocarbon receptor activity. And you can see that... Um, so, so these are cells, they've been given TCDD, right? So the aerial hydrocarbon receptor is activated and it's cranking out this E-rod. And so what they do is they give higher and higher concentrations of myristin. And as you can see, E-rod e activity drops with increasing uh, concentrations of myristin. You can see these other flavones, apigenin, camphorol, quercetin are also pretty good. So flavones in general have this activity of you know, putting the activated era hydrocarbon receptor back in his cage. 
Um, and so this is another, this is a study using my rice tin, which is similar in a lot of ways uh, to the study that used the pharmaceutical PARP inhibitor in those mice. And yes, uh, my rice tin looks like my rice tin. I actually got that from Google. I searched for my rice tin and I said, did you mean my rice tin? And I said, no, Google, but thank you. That's a helpful mnemonic. Um, and so in these mice, um, they gave them uh, a high fat diet and they gave them my rice tin. And you can see NAD plus levels go up and I'm sorry, I misspoke. This is not even on a high fat diet, I think. Um, so my rice tin increases NAD plus levels and it actually even lowers NADH a little bit. This is getting these mice out of reductive stress. Um, there's the NAD plus going up, uh, nearly doubling. NADH is down a bit, and the ratio of NAD plus to NADH is significantly higher. So these mice are very much out of reductive stress when given my ricetin. And what does that do? Well, uh, you see that as cert or as my ricetin increases, so does cert one. Uh, expression and activity and cert one has its little scissors there it's taking acetyl groups off of enzymes right and they showed that this is in muscle tissue of the mice given my ricin the amount the percentage of this pgc1 which is a very important metabolic enzyme uh was only only half as much of it was acetylated in the mice given the my ricin because the my ricin is is uh, getting rid of the PARP, which increases the NAD+, and the CERT1 requires NAD+, to do its job of deacetylating uh, enzymes, and that gets metabolism running again. And so you can see in these mice, they absolutely have higher metabolic rate throughout the day. The the red line, um, so, so mice are nocturnal, so they're more active at night, and you can see, especially at night, uh, they're simply just burning more energy um, than mice that are not given my rice tin. Uh, and you can see, look at the difference in citrate synthase activity. So that, again, that's the limiting factor in the Krebs cycle. Uh, so these mice are really, um, they have significantly increased metabolic rate due to blocking PARP. Uh, also, uh, they have more endurance, they have stronger grip strength, and they're better at doing thermogenesis in response to a cold challenge. So pretty impressive benefits. This is a separate one where they actually looked at obesity. This is a new study. Um, they actually fattened these mice for 12 weeks and then in the 13th week gave them my ricin. And you can see how rapidly uh, their weight uh, returns to something pretty close to the, the weight of the control mice, right? And that's a very dramatic effect. Um, and right, all the my ricin did is it blocked PARP and probably also the era hydrocarbon receptor. And bang, just like that, um, the mice lost the weight. Um, and I think this is a really interesting chart from that study. Um, so you see that uh, we've got, so there's three different lines here. This ones with the arrow are the mice on the high fat diet. And I wrote slash RS, meaning they're in reductive stress, right? Those are the mice on the high fat diet. Uh, their enzymes are acetylated. Their metabolic rate slows way down. And then when they give them the myristin, uh, their metabolic rate reverts to that of a normal mouse who's not in reductive stress. And so the, the blocking PARP is not giving them some super metabolism. It's just returning their metabolism to what it should be. It's returning their metabolism to that of a normal mouse. Uh, also, again, another study, the leanest mice are by far the least active. Um, you know, this is their, you can see they have this little spike of activity, uh, around 8 PM when they're probably waking up. Uh, and that's it. They don't, <laughs> the, the, the mice on the high fat diet are way more active and way fatter. Um, that's just a fun observation from these studies anyway. Uh, so here's one more study. I thought this one's interesting because one of the problems with flavones in general and my ricin is that they're not very water soluble. And sometimes uh, there's troubles with bioavailability, and but they are very soluble in ethanol. Right? My ricin is quite soluble in ethanol, and so um, and red wine has my ricin. And so what they did was they made they essentially made this pseudo red wine, except it's very purified. It's just ethanol, water, and my ricin. And the high dose is about the amount of my ricin that there is in some good red wines. And uh, so what you can see is that. 
you know, the mice um, on the high fat diet are fatter. The, they gave some uh, the control, you know, quote unquote wine drink with just the ethanol. And they were even a little heavier. And then as they increased the dose of my ricin that they put in the wine, um, and they only gave him that wine once a day, they weren't even consuming that much. Um, the, uh, they got leaner and leaner until at the high dose of my ricin, they were almost as lean as the control mice, um, or sorry, rats. And they say at the end, we propose the potential for my ricin containing alcoholic beverages to be developed into anti-obesity health food, which I think is an interesting idea because like I say, um, I think with all these things, making them more bioavailable is important. And if you dissolve the my ricin into some alcohol and just consume it in a dropper even, it might be more absorbable than if you just take it as a capsule. Um, and finally, there's not a ton of evidence about my ricin in humans. But uh, this study did look at um, sort of long-term diabetes risk based on how much my ricin you consume. And the people who consume the most my ricin have the lowest risk of diabetes. There's a lot of potential confounders in this study. I don't love it. Uh, you can see they're getting most of their my ricin from vegetables, coffee, uh, wine, tea. Um, like I say, I, take it for what it's worth. So in conclusion... Obese humans, I presented evidence in episode one, have act, have an activated aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And that activated aryl hydrocarbon receptor is pushing up PARP activity. And we saw two studies showing that obese humans do indeed have high PARP activity. Now, uh, so the aryl hydrocarbon receptor is activating PARP, which is lowering NAD+. With low NAD+, CERT1 cannot do its job. CERT1 also requires NAD+, to do its job. And you can see he's got his scissors there trying to take off those acetyl groups, but he can't do it without NAD+. This gives, uh, this gives things a low metabolic rate. However, um, the COP, which can be the drug Olaparib, or could also be dietary flavones, puts PARP back in its cage, uh, that increases NAD+. With increased NAD+, uh, CERT1 can go out and deacetylate those enzymes. And with deacetylated enzymes, metabolic rates return to normal and obesity is reversed. Thank you for watching episode three.